Good morning. Welcome to St. John United Methodist Church. Pardon my voice this morning. My name is Beth Dixon. I'm one of the staff members here. I have a few announcements for you. Today, we have our, finally, our welcome luncheon for the Andersons, which had to be postponed due to COVID earlier this summer. So please stay today and have a potluck lunch with us. Even if you didn't bring anything, I know this church, I'm certain there will be plenty of food. So we hope you'll stay and enjoy lunch with us in the fellowship hall just down the hall this way. After the luncheon today, worship committee, a reminder that we're going to meet for a few minutes in room 108. We'll kind of gather up as things are winding down. So please stay if you can for a meeting. Also this week, we have a church council meeting on Tuesday at 630. The Reverend Dana Everhart, who is the mission specialist for the district and who's been assigned to St. John to walk us through the process of um, adopting the simplified accountability structure for our council, he will be here to go over some of the details of that with us. So if you have questions, even if you aren't on church council, you can come to that meeting and listen. And you're also um, be aware it was in the news from the pews this last month, and we'll continue to advertise it. There are two dates coming up, and we'll have information sessions about that before we vote at church conference the end of November. So there will be two different opportunities for you to come and learn more about the simplified accountability structure. It's new for all of us. Please take note, next sat Sunday morning is the Ironman race downtown, which happens every year. It's a great event, but it will require the city to block off some streets downtown, including Green Street right in front of the church. So if you usually park in front of the church, you may want to plan to park in our parking lot off Telfair, and also maybe give yourself a few extra minutes to um, get to church next Sunday morning. We look forward to welcoming the South Boundary Singers. They'll be help, um, providing special music for worship, so we hope you all plan to come. Don't let the Ironman race deter you. And then when worship is over, we can go out and cheer for the runners who should be running out in front. Thank you all for your help with the DCCM food distribution yesterday. The next one is scheduled for the 15th of October. It's a great opportunity to come out for a couple of hours and help as we hand out food to those in need in the community. It really has been building this last year, and I think they're now serving well over 200 families every, every time we do it, which is incredible. We do want to offer some prayers this morning for the Hamilton family, for Gloria and Nelson Hamilton, their son, Rhett, who was, I think, still officially a member of St. John. They had moved to Florida several years ago, but Rhett was killed um, in a car accident this past weekend, so we want to continue to offer prayers for their family. Thank you again for being with us in worship, and now we will prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of Almighty God.
grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. When joy is gone and hearts are sick, O oh God, you give us Christ as our healing balm. He came in human flesh that he might give himself as a ransom for our salvation and anoint us with the spirit of consolation and joy. Hear the cry of your people, that we may rejoice in the richness of your love and be faithful stewards of your many gifts. Amen. Let us pray as we hear the scriptures read this morning. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I'm telling the truth, I am not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and in truth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in Psalm 79, which you'll find in your bulletin. O oh God, the nations have come into your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have laid Jerusalem in ruins. They have given the bodies of your servants. They have poured out their blood like water all around Jerusalem, and there was no one to bury them. We have become the haunt of writers, haunt of writers of How long, O oh Lord, will you be angry forever? Will your jealous wrath burn like fire? For For they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his habitation. Do not remember against us the iniquities of our ancestors, and let your compassion come speedily to meet us. For we are brought very low. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive our sins for your name's sake.
this time, I invite for the children to come join me down front. Why don't you sit on the red cushions this week? Come on down. All right. It's good to see you. Did everybody have a good Saturday? Yes? Kind of. Yeah, it was pretty fun. So... Last week, I talked about being grumpy. And have any of you ever been grumpy? Maybe grumpy. So this week, I thought with the gospel lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about worry. Have you ever been worried about something? Yes. So I read a survey. Do you ever practice doing surveys at school? where you like chart out who likes what color donut and everything. So I read a survey that said in sixth grade, are any of you in sixth grade? You're in seventh, yeah. That the number one worry of a sixth grader is knowing their locker combination. <laughs> that was not your worry? So when you go to middle school, you have a special place to put your books, and you will be given a combination lock. Sometimes you have one that's hooked on, sometimes it's already on the door, and you have to memorize the number. And every year, in most schools, you get a new locker and you get a new number. And that was, on the survey, the number one worry. So, have you all worried about something, right? Yes. What do you do when you're really worried? What do you do? Yes? Right, you try to maybe memorize a little better, but also take a break and come back. Hold on, let me get you, and then I'll get you, and then I'll get you. All right, what do you do when you worry? Think about good things. That's a good thing. What about you? Watch TV. <laughs> me too. What about you? What do you do when you worry? Play games. What about? Go see your rabbit. Yes. Those are all good things to do when you're worried. But you know, one of the best things you can do when you're worried is find that friend and share what you're worried about. Because sometimes we worry about things so much that we just bottle it up and we don't want to tell anybody because maybe we're embarrassed that we're worried about something like our locker combination. But if you have that good friend that you can say, oh my goodness, I'm so worried about this, Sometimes they might just stand with you while you're worried, and sometimes they might say, you know, I worry about the same thing too. And then sometimes they might give you a good tip, like write your locker combination on the side of your tennis shoe. You never know. But don't bottle it up just like that grumpiness. Don't let it stay in too long. Find your friend, and all these friends you have here are all your friends in faith. And they, too, are good to talk to you when you worry. All right, can you repeat after me as we pray this morning? Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Lord, guide me when I'm worried. Help me, Lord, to have a good friend in moments of need. Amen. All right, thanks, guys. As you're able, please stand for the reading of the gospel lesson from the book of Luke. Then Jesus said to his disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. 
So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I've decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? The man answered, a hundred jugs of olive oil. The manager said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 50. Then he asked another one, and how much do you owe? And the man replied, a hundred containers of wheat. The manager said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the, dis the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, Make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the internal homes. But whoever is faithful in very little is also faithful in much. And whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you to the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thank be to God. God. Kenny Rogers tells us if you're going to play the game, you got to learn how to play it right. You got to know how to hold them and you got to know how to fold them. When you walk away, you got to know when to run. You never count your money when you're sitting at the table for the time enough for counting is when the dealing's done. All week I read this parable and thought of that song. What is Jesus getting at here? What directly does he want his disciples to know? And what does the Gospel of Luke, what does this author, give us this unique, strange perspective of Jesus? I do understand the manager, for no truer words are reflected in Scripture. I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. One of the more clever lines of the Gospels. About three weeks ago, I spent a Monday at Peachtree Road United Methodist Church there in the heart of Buckhead. Reverend Bill Brett had gathered around colleagues from Texas, Florida, Virginia, and the North Georgia Conference to talk about the future of the United Methodist Church. No answers were given. But it was a nice day with a nice lunch. Our speaker that morning, though, was retired Navy Admiral Barry Black. Reverend Black now serves as the chaplain to the U.S. Senate. He is a Seventh-day Adventist. He came to spend about three hours with us after he had preached all three services that Sunday morning at Peachtree Road the day before. He told us a lot of funny stories, and he did the pastor bragging well. Told us that there was a U.S. Senator who led a delegation to Christ once from a foreign country. Reported back that his Bible study is well attended, and there was one Senator who has never missed 
a study in 20 years. And that once after a prayer breakfast, his weekly prayer breakfast, where senators stand up and share their testimony, one senator said to him, man, I really appreciated what he said today. It almost made me pause and not go stab him in the back later this afternoon. <laughs> he got a good laugh. He explained to us that his job is to guide the senators in all their spiritual life, that many come to him for counsel. He counseled a young Barack Obama who was discerning whether or not he should run for president. He said he wanted to tell him, you know, you just showed up. But instead, he gave him a book about dreams and asked him, what are you dreaming about? For our dreams can help us discern what our next path should be. So he did all the good preaching, preacher bragging that we all love to hear from our colleagues. But most importantly, he told us that we were all in that room because we have to just get through it so we can get to it. That we have to get through the mess that we're all wound up in and get too wound up about. We have to get through the mess to get to it, to move forward. He said he saw that in the Senate, that his prayers, of course, have been mocked and will be prayed by Saturday Night Live one time. But it's the prayer that can we get through whatever is happening so we can get to the work that needs to be done next. Jesus is giving the disciples this very odd lesson, unique to the Gospel of Luke. He is giving them this warning that they must know what is going on in the world around them. That they can't be naive to how things may and are done. That they have to keep a keen and sharp eye to who is with them. I struggle with this parable because I'm like, can the manager have some better friends? Friends that when things go south and you get fired will let you into their home because they love you, not because you rearrange their bills. The disciples are given this warning to stay alert. In this scripture, we are given some strong words about not being able to divide our loyalties, which does fit at the heart of all the Gospels. For where your heart and your is is where your treasure is. Where your treasure is is where your heart will be. Where your loyalties are, whether they are with Rome or, with it, or they are with Christ. For you have to live under Roman rule, but your loyalty has to be to God. It's a balance that as Christians, we actually find ourselves walking in all the time. It's a question of dedication. It's a question of service. It's a question of keeping your focus on the cross, the grace of Christ that goes before us, the love of God that is greater than all our sins, and knowing everything that's going on around us at the same time. No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or to be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. For a part of the gospel that is unclear, there is so much challenge in those very clear last few statements. 
Life is keeping that balance of knowing when we are serving the wrong God. It goes back all the way into the beginning with Moses and the Israelites. For they could not keep their focus on everything that God was giving them. Manna in the night and a fire and a cloud to guide them in the day. But it was too hard. The road was too long. They whined and complained every step of the way. Only like two of them actually made it into the promised land, for even Moses died before he got there. The struggle of divided loyalty rips at us every day as we walk as disciples. Sometimes worry is at the middle of that, for worry can become our idol as well. The Sabbath day, the day we keep as holy, the day where we gather in the community of faith, is our day of the week to realign ourselves in a way where we can check where our loyalties are lying that day. Where in the cards we're holding, what are we putting most important first? And it's the reminder that the love of God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and loving your neighbor as much as you love yourself is loyalty number one in the call of discipleship. Then if it's a good week, everything else that pulls us, uh, us falls into place. You never see this parable depicted in a stained glass window. For you may have someone sowing seeds, someone welcoming people at a banquet, but you never have some guy over there with shrewd eyes. Remember, let your loyalties lie with the Lord. Live your life with the goodness of God. And on Sunday, find your reset. So your loyalties for the cards you hold, for the struggles of the work around you, can be aligned so the grace and peace and love and hope and the joy of Christ can be in all the dealings you have that week. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you are able, please stand as we affirm our faith, number 881 in your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer this morning. We'll have a few moments of silent prayer, and then I will lead us to pray together. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the gifts of this Sabbath day. Help us to align our life towards you. Help us to be people who are quick to forgive and slow to anger. Help us to be a good friend to someone in need.
for this day. We trust that you hear all our prayers. We pray for our friends who are hurting and lost. We pray for our family members who need extra love and care. We pray for the community of Augusta in a city that is full of arts and life, but also a city that needs your guidance, Lord. Lord, guide us in loving our neighbors in need. For this day, we pray for our congregation. As a people gathered here, strengthen our commitment to you, Lord. Help us grow in friendship and in love. Help us see the wider world around us for its good and for its trouble, so that we may respond as your disciples, Lord, loving our neighbors, offering grace and forgiveness. And Lord, on this day, we pray the prayer that you taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. At this time, I invite for you to stand and to greet each other with signs of peace. Peace. Yeah. I invite our ushers to come forward for our morning's offering. May our gifts today go to the work of God's good kingdom.
look forward to seeing you all at lunch. Let us have a blessing for our meal today before we have our benediction. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for those who have prepared this meal. We are grateful for the life and love that is in this congregation. Let the food today nourish our bodies so that our bodies may be to your service. Amen. Go now in the grace, peace, and love of God. May the Holy Spirit be your guide in the week ahead. Amen.